Hello and welcome to this video. Today is a little different. I'll be showing you how to do a maintenance wash on the front loaded washer. And it, this is handy because um, it will help to clean out the machine, prevent smells and bacteria. And I always come across most machines that haven't been done for years. And well, I don't know why people would do that because it would shorten the life of your machine and it normally fixes most problems. Um, so this is a general video of how to do that. Now, all front loaders will be different depending on where your filter is and how the drawer works, but on my machine here, it's as simple as possible. The camera may shake a bit because it's a big going on close-ups and I've only got a portable camera at the moment, but I'll try and fill in all the details here. So first thing first is we need to clean the, the easy parts, so it would be the dispenser drawer, the drum and rubber thing, and also the filter system, since I've always seen people missing this. And once all this is done, then we will show you how to do the internal wash system, which is the long process and the important bit to for this. Also, this other process also will help to clean out the waste system as well, because if you lose a very low wash all the time, and non biopowder or liquids, and a lot of resources build up with the drum and the external and it's probably gets blocked so this is another reason for a maintenance wash it keeps the thing all cleaned out and it also may prevent um, breakups of um, of all debris in all the machine depending on your model really. this will work with well any machine it includes soft water hard water moderate and the, the cycle depends on how how often use the machine. So if you use it regularly, I'd say recommend once a month. I use mine about two to two, every two weeks for only the washing up and say me. So I'm normally do it about every two months and also I'm in the soft water area. So yeah, let's, uh, let's just get started and I'll show you what we're gonna be doing. Sorry about this. So this is the washer, that's what we're on. Sorry about the camera, I'm trying to get some behind it. Uh, so this is a Millie, well, a Lay. All brands are very the same. And um, first thing you have to make sure is that you turn the washer off, because we may be accessing the, um, where the pump is. You don't have to, but it's advisable, in case the machine does something, and that pump is where all the water comes out. So first thing to be first is the easiest thing I'm going to do is do the show you what we need to do. Sorry. So what we need here is bio powder or non bio is okay, but you need something with a bleaching agent or you can use like vinegar or anything else. This is important because this is what's going to do in the way. A brush, ideal small brush because this is going to be where you'd be cleaning most areas, especially the drawer compartment. General cleaning spray, I don't spray. You don't want to be using anything abrasive on this in case you damage the rubber. Paper towels or J cloths or anything else like that, just to cleaning or to mop up. Very also important is a a rag or an old towel you don't use often for general purpose because this is important because you'll be accessing the wall part so we're going to be water around the ground area. And a tub, well bowl, tub, whatever, this is really catching all the wastewater. So these are the general stuff that you would need That's with any machine. So first of all, we're going to sorry, this is weird because I'm left handed also. Access the um, drawer every day. So we're going to up here. and uh, bearing on your drawer, this is how the drawer looks like. I think everyone knows it. So conditioner, main, and general wash. Now oh, this is thing has an auto wash it claims. So it normally keeps everything clean, but you still need to occasionally clean it because you can see there's like black mildred from in your uh, mildred because these are cold wash systems and maybe the cold and if the machine sits in a cold area this will build up a lot but anyways this is the main thing that always gets clogged up which is the um, conditioner the drawer should be done i say uh, depends on how often you do it but i say about oh, a week or two weeks or a month especially if you use a lot of liquids because they, they, they build up and i've seen some very nasty machines where their things all coated and this is where all the water comes in. So if this is not kept clean, there's no point in washing your clothes because as soon as you put powder in here, 
it's going to bring all your stuff down the machine. So this should be done regularly, even when you're not going to do a maintenance wash. And, uh, and also, um, if you don't do this, you can also block this as well. And this is used on the file and we don't use condition as it's used. So I've seen so many bad ones. So to remove the drawer, there's normally a, a button either, depending on the way that you're seeing it. And it's either here or here, this is up here, so you just hold this down and it releases the drawer. And put, and put it in the kitchen sink. First thing with this is if you look under the unit, turn the flash on, um, this is where all the water goes in, there's a hole down the bottom and there's jets at the top. So what you need to do is get the brush, get this brush here, go right underneath it and with um, soapy water or a cleaning agent, as long as it's um, run abrasive and clean all of this on here with a brush or well any type of brush I did an old toothbrush and you want to clean up all the, the jets on the bottom here because these can sometimes get clogged up with um, old washing powder and anything else but also if you're in a very very cold area where the machine sits these can mildew can build up even use it for a while and if these get blocked it drops the performance of the machine but where this machine is it's pretty good so you would get some washing powder and clean all this up until it's all cleaned and also be it around the back there because uh, there's some angled uh, plastic where I see some powder can build up. This is very clean because like I say they're always maintaining the wash but I've seen some nasty stuff and also wipe around the um, general part. So I'm going to clean this up here first. So we come down here so we can see fine. I say I apologise for the continued movement because I'm using a portable camera. That's all I have at the moment, but um, and also just this is a test of this camera as well. Like I said, I need to stand and wash it up with this. So, with this, you need to remove the siphoner. This is the little siphoner, so what was always carried in here, and this is where I see most junk build up. So you it throws along on the machine, it could be here, it could be here, here, but you need to pull this little thing off like this, and then you need to make sure you clean this internal part here, and also this little hole. Now, this is where all the water goes down. So, um, when you wash this all out, it's advisable to poke a um, you know, cotton bud or a very small bottle brush down here, and it will clean up and then make sure the water comes through. Now, I see some models may have the um, units in here. And what happens there is there's a little chute that comes all the way down the bottom here and it's very very narrow and it can build up so you can use a very long bottom brush you can get them in most places and you can poke it up and clean it but the main thing is to make sure that it's actually cleaned uh, maybe not obviously the most cheap machines but um, this is good this is, this is on a woman legs that have this fit this specifically it's one of the conditioner and prevents powder getting in but you um, just lift it up you can see there's all just bits here and it's just Gives us all clean out with the brush and some soapy water. And also want to take on. There's an easy thing to do, but this should be done on a regular basis to keep the machine clean. If you don't do it, there's no point in uh, washing. So I've got the noise because I've got the water. Like I say, I've seen some of these machines that have been badly done. Also, this has been smell from here, but like I say, you can just wash the power or any other cleaner. But well, this is fine.
of it lands in the lake. So I've been left handed and I'm going to come on the other side for some wet area. sits in the machine itself. A dry or you can just paper towel to dry or whatever way to dry it, but when the light dry it. I'm not worried about the internal parts here, but then the external. And then this as well to make sure it's all cleaned. And you simply put this that way you found it. It clips only one way, so it holds in. There you go. And so let me just get the camera. And then we put this back in like so. When you put this in, then it will automatically will lock down. So you don't need to push this. It will clip in. That's it. It's now back in. So that's all cleaned. That's one part done. Uh, this is part of the mini, and that's just, you need this. This hit sits in the the back of the uh, drawer, and this is a needed. I'll tell you why. In a moment now. Nick. The next thing I would recommend, I recommend going the down the machine because what well, Travels down, then it's easy. Well, the next thing is the drum. Then this is another thing I see people miss mounting. With this machine, you need power to operate the um, to open the door. But it's an electronic lock. This is an all melee machine, so no matter what it is, there are two ways to do it. You can either use an override or you can use power. So at the moment, I am because I'm not going into the, the um, into the pump at the moment. I'm going to apply power and just open the door electronically. It's easier than doing the other way, but I'll show you that way anyways. And that's that. I'll turn it off again and then I'll say because I don't need to do anything again. Sorry about was at the wall, didn't realize I was doing it. That other cable goes to a bridge, I can't unplug it. But it's not in the way. And generally the these are pretty clean but um, I say just give it a general spray with the spray, give it clean. But the main area that most people ignore is this actual um, rubber ring, and this is where I normally find all gunk and stuff, or mildew, like it's in here. And this should be done on every end of every wash. You should give this a quick wipe, especially down here. Let me turn the flash on. Sorry about the brightness there. Especially down here, you can see this is something done then for a couple of weeks, and it's sort of built up. And you can see these little holes here. These are important here because you need to keep these clean because that's where all the water's going to come down here. You can just poke a um, either wooden stuff or something that's not going to damage this thing. Because if you damage this, well, you'd be flooding your kitchen and then you'd have to someone to replace this. But generally, um, it, I would use a spray or, like I say, a bowl or washing up the grit and a bra brazen, like a scour, not a scour, but the green scale, you know, for like pans and that, that's not going to do non stick. And, and wash your things, especially around here, all the way around the rim, I think it is, especially around the top area, because I've seen so much icky stuff down here, and this should be done on a regular basis, because it's the same thing. If you didn't have this done on a regular basis, it's no point in washing your clothes, because all this will go back into the machine, and well, there's no point. So I'm going to give this a general clean. Um, Tree, point. about this, like I say, I'm doing everything by one hand did all the time, so I do apologise. Hmm. Sorry about 
like this. I don't know if the camera's going all over the place. I'll turn my laptop sound doing it one handed. My camera, the camera, which is lovely. This is just a general purpose pack to practice a spray, but you don't do that. Not about those little cleaners and everything else, because like I say, we're going to do another wash of it and we've washed to cleaners and also clean out the bowl. Also, if you're in a medium to hard water area, I would recommend using something like um, so you can get rid of the scale as well. Just you can get some whatever you're fancy. But it's a general thing. Um, what I say also is if you do a general wash of a tiny machine, the machine will run, lo run longer and less payout for bills and stuff. But mind you, this thing will not this thing will last a long time due to the build, but still, this is a general thing for everything. Oh, there's so many times we've gone to places where they don't do this. Sorry, I'm just moaning one of my things. I'm sorry about the camera, <laughs> it's really nice to keep putting you in the, not in the war on that, but I do apologise. So, I'm still new to this stuff of um, recording and stuff. I do apologise. Okay, so just do this. Special attention to all the rings. And like I say, right underneath here, you need to get it. Sorry, I can't remember to look at the camera. Never yeah, remember to look at my hand. So, I do apologize. I need to do more um, recordings on my phone to get used to it. Like I say, you can do for washing powder, you can use um, any type of thing, but dang it. Right. Yeah, that's spray. Just uh, not just as much as possible because obviously you'll still be doing a maintenance wash and clean it, but this is ideal to do first to get most of the debris. Like I say, I've seen there's so many machines that oh, don't do this. And you should dry and do this to dry off the dry mail and uh, clean it every time you finish so that way it doesn't smell when also you get rid of all the dirt and everything else. That's all that done. So that's the wall drum and nothing else and all the rim. So that's that. So I think close the door now because so you want to close it now. This one won't let you open it. I think it must be a safety thing to put in to prevent people getting trapped or I don't know, all my lean machines have it. You put those to one side. Then no, no. this is gonna be the most fun and messy part of the job. Cleaning out the cleaning out the drainage system. Burning. Drainage system were very on machine to machine. Some machines have a some machines have a kick plate on the bottom which you need to scrap and pull off and exposes the pump. And others are in a door like this, which is a little bit easier. Also the ones are draining a bit further down and you would need to put towers along where the drain port is and you would need to use a container or a large one to jump it underneath it. So we need to stop cage lift the machine and do and do it. There was always water in the drainage system because, well, it's always left behind, and that's what I'm going to show you now. But this one, you can't normally you can open this by just pushing down. This one, that yet because there's a reason for the malaise. They have this. This is what comes with the machine, and you use this to pry open the door. I'll show you why. This little tab here is the emergency release of the door. So when you pull this, it opens the door without power, and that's why you have to have a tool to open this because you can still open it during the machine operation unless it's um over so it's essentially your fill level or in spin they won't let you still use this but that's one reason this door won't open on its own but this is on all malaise no matter what it is 
So uh, that's what this one has, but other than that, this is what most machines have. Access to the um, drain. This is also where if you've um, seen some missing stuff or the machine suddenly stops pumping, this is where you need access as well. Some machines will have has a pipe somewhere, which is likely mostly drained. So if you had to open the machine due to a power cap, most of the time they won't open this to drain. So it's like a little pipe you put in a bowl and pull the pop off and it drains. But this is the same procedure because basically any water that all has to come from here before it goes out of the machine. So all of them have general jobs, and this is one I also rise and need this. Now this is really all golf's good because the water came off here, and this flat's also good because it's using as a sort of water thing. So it's not that not, not much of a mess on this, I'd say, but some machines are really messy. So you always have a um, towel you don't use often, or something that you can wash without any main wash, I would say. So make sure you have it's underneath. It gets very messy. It does. And you need to turn this, but don't just pull it off because if a lot of water gushes out and you've got a small container like this, you run to have to shut it off. So always start slowly, and especially with this machine because it's a specialized float for its auto system. Okay, so make sure it's on a slow rate so you can see the water's coming out now. You want it at a certain rate so that it is a bit messy there, so that's why you want the towels. Especially if the machine's got uh, full load, so it's going to be really messy. Yeah. That's why you open it slightly and let the water out. So that way you've got a small container, you can always make it a bit of mess, you can easily shut it off and then empty and go again. But this machine hasn't got much in it, you can see. So the general machines have the same type of process. Yeah, I know I've got the flash on, but um, like I say, I'm in the kitchen. Shut it off like so. Just empty the container. <laughs> And you just keep and just do it, keep doing it until all the water is empty. Keep doing it until all the water is empty. You know, as it slows down, you then open it more, keep keep doing it. But take your time on this because you do one with. Say the machine, there's a lot of water in here because there's a special feature in the machine. Oops, <laughs> sorry, don't want to show you what the make of the Oops. Yeah, you just saw the make of the cleaner, but any make would do. Okay, so when I've turned it now, it's loosely now, there's not much water, so this thing's now empty. So we just keep doing this and then remove it. And this is the um, various on model, but this is the body plunger. So you want to give this a rinse, especially around the back area, especially if you've got pets and stuff, because I've it's, it needs to be kept clean. So this is not most of them all clean to this right now. And let's see now. So this is what a general pump looks like. Any machine is the same. So you've got the propeller here, and that's the thing that spins and drains. Now, if you have a clog on a razor, like for instance, I've got in, you take this out and you would check down here. Normally, because you normally see like coins or stuff, you just remove it. But also, um, check on the exit port here, and the there's two ports. This, is, this goes to the drainage, and there's another one. Oh. Now, this is from the machine here. So, this, this is where the machine comes, it goes down the back. Sometimes it's up, sometimes it's down. Very. So, if you have like bra straps or anything else, you need to check here to put your finger in and make sure there's nothing in there. But this is always a right, it's advisable to um, check your pockets before um, 
before you um, put the machine on, because I always see like um, coins or stuff getting trapped. And with most machines, um, they do a self test when they start up, and if the thing doesn't pump, it will throw, either throw an error code or give you a warning that it won't run, it will just shut off. So if your machine will not start, check this and check this the unit out because it normally is one of the culprits that people do every day. But it's also advisable to clean it because, like I say, if you have pets or this can get clogged up over time, some have traps and all sorts of on the machine and how old the machine is. So, I don't need to normally clean this, but um, I don't they don't need to put any sprays in this one because it's just a drain. But I uh, say just um, give it a quick clean out with paper towels or something else just to get some loose, some loose stuff off. But like I say, if you keep the machine clean, it's, it won't happen. So, like I said, it's only me with the camera, so. I'm moving over, sorry if it's moving over the place, but that's what I have, and I'm just getting used to doing stuff. And also, I'm using the wrong hand. Sorry if it's rotating. I don't really. I'm still new, new to recording like this, so I do apologise. So I'll do an updated video next time with a fixed camera. So I just put it back in like that. So and make sure we need to do this as tight as possible because tight as possible is it's sealed because like I said, this is the thing that stops all the water coming out. So if you haven't sealed it correctly and you run the machine, all the water will just start pouring out. If that does that, just immediately start the machine and just double check this again. That's what you need to do. Okay, that's that, and then just right up around the area here, like so. A bit much. There you go, that's how the drain is doing, but this is ideal if you get a blockage. Flat bother, I like because it's easy access, but the plate bar you have to take the bottom off, and that can be fiddly. And that's it. And then this thing goes into the um, dispenser drawer. Somewhere around here, somewhere. Dum dum. Pay attention. There we go. Okay, so that's that done. Let me just tidy up a bit. Okay, so that's the. Sorry, I'm moving around because I'm doing the hands now. So that's that done. And now we're going to do the main cycle wash. So that's when you need the some sort of biopowder or anything that's going to break down and stuff. If you're in hard water area or medium, I've said also get something that's um, going to break down your lime scale as well. You can do that with this as well. So that's advisable. You can also get um, wash cleaning stuff. But I find out that they normally ask you to put the machine onto a medium high heat, heat setting. But to be honest, it's advisable to do a boil wash or hard wash because you want it hot as possible so that it can break down all the um, grease and stuff. So put it into your general wash cycle, now it else, it is everything else. And turn the machine on. If we turn the machine on here, right, that's what state this is. So we want the cotton wash, general, and the 90 degrees wash and 95, and you want it as hot as possible. Uh, so you select that, and the machine well, comes up with um, all the options. If you have um, sensitive skin or anything else, I recommend turning on the extra water system. This just puts more water in, but on other machines, there'll be options, say, extra rinse, so you have to do as much, much rinse as possible if you're unsure. But like I say, you can use um, other powders, but as long as it's going to break down the lower powder, you're okay. I don't know why any other machine wash, but like I say, some machine cleaners ask you to do a 60 degrees wash, which is why, because that's almost like a warm wash. Okay, and also don't do any short washes or anything else because you want the machine to be running as long as possible so that it can do its work. And uh, don't worry about it saying two hours, this machine will do it in an hour because all machines, when you start the machine up, about 10 minutes it will calculate the um, weight and how much water. And because the machine's empty, 
very important, it must be empty because you don't want it to be working on the clothes, you want it to work on the actual system inside. So that's that. So then I just press the start button. And the machine will start filling up. Now this will count, this will drop down in about 10 minutes. And I'd say it's about an hour on that because it's to do that. So yep, no leaks here. I have to find it, otherwise it would stop coming in. And the reason I have no clothes in here because it's going to the bio powder is going to wash it now. The level of bio powder depends on how powders depends on how often. If it's a very dirty machine, I say put a decent amount in to get rid of all the junk in that. Okay, so that's now going to do its general cycle. So it's going to do hot wash and then all the rinses. Um, you can turn the spin off if you don't want it on because you don't need it actually, but I normally leave it alone because it doesn't hurt the machine. But you can turn it off. The journey of this thing will break down all. This thing will clean the tub out. The tub is the thing hidden inside. The, the, the. And like I said, because it's boiling hot wash, when this thing drains, it will pump all that boiling water down on your drain system and then it will loosen up all the um, debris, grease and dirt that can build up on the exhaust drain. And also this should kill a lot of smells. Leave off some. Okay, so I'm going to let the machine run and I'm going to come back to it when the machine is finished. So I'm going to I will leave it here in live time, but I will speed the process up until the end of it. That way, you can see what the machine does. Okay, so hopefully it won't take long, but like I said, I will speed the process up here to the end. There you go, see, now the machine's already dropped the timer down, if you noticed, since it's um, calculated there's nothing in it. And we'll adjust the water cycle. Cycle, so that's how easy it is to do. And I just just um, wipe out the drum again and leave the door open for it to dry up. But yeah. Just make sure all the water's out of here and clean it up, and then I do have to leave the open for maybe an hour or two. Just let it, the thing actually dry out, and the machine's now ready to be used as the wash. And like I say, this will vary on how often you use the machine and then in your water condition, but as long as you keep doing it, um, you should have a clean machine. Hope this helps out and uh, thanks for watching.